वेलकम टू ऑल माई सेल्फ जयमीन पटेल फ्रॉम एल जे इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ फार्मेसी आई विल टेक द सीरीज लेक्चर ऑफ बायो फार्मास्यूटिक्स एंड फार्माकोनेटिक्स इन माई टूडेज लेक्चर आई विल टेक द इंट्रोडक्शन ऑफ द बायो फार्मास्यूटिक्स डीएड्स ड्रग आर द सब्सटेंस इंटेंडेड फॉर द यूज इन डायग्नोसिस क्योर मेडिकेशन ट्रीटमेंट एंड प्रिवेंशन ऑफ द डिसीज वी डो नॉट गिव ड्रग डायरेक्टली इन टू द पाउडर फॉर्म वी प्रोवाइड द ड्रग in different doses form that is the solid doses form semi solid doses form or liquid doses form earlier it was believed that the therapeutic response of the drug is an attribute of its intrinsic pharmacological activity means the therapeutic response of the drug is remain fixed but later on scientists came to know therapeutic response may vary if we change the doses form if we change the route of administration if we change many things suppose for example if i provide the drug into the tablet doses form and if i provide the drug into the parenteral doses form in both the cases the therapeutic response is different even in the solid doses form if i provide the drug into the tablet and capsule doses form yet therapeutic response is slightly changed so different factors affect the therapeutic response of the drug molecules so study of this all the factors is come in category of the biopharmaceutics so biopharmaceutics means it examines the interrelationship of the physical chemical properties of the drug and doses form in which the drug is given and the route of administration on rate and extent of systemic drug absorption biopharmaceutics provide the scientific basis for the drug product design and the drug product development now here what is the flow chart of the drug movement into the body when the drug enter inside the body okay drug is going to release from the doses form and later on dissolution of the drug is occur the dissolved drug permeate through the membrane and enter into the systemic circulation this process is known as the absorption process once the drug enter into the systemic circulations later on drug is distributed to the different part of body in tissue compartment so this one is nothing but called as a distribution process side by side from systemic circulation drug is undergo the metabolism process as well as excretion process and the drug that enter into the tissue compartment it connected with the receptor and provide the pharmacological actions so here the different step is there different stage is there through which the drug is going to move into the body and at each stage different factor is going to influence so we will study this A D M E and all the factors influencing the A D M E in biopharmaceutics. So biopharmaceutics means the study of A D M E, absorption, distribution, metabolism, and excretion. Now biopharmaceutical considerations in drug product design. Now what is our desire? What is our intentions? Which type of doses form that we want to develop? According to that. we have to set the parameters first what is the therapeutic objective is there we want to produce the rapid release formulations or we want to produce the slow release formulations according to that we have to design the doses form drug also play the important role drug is also one of the important factors because the solubility of the drug polymorphic form of the drug particle size of the drug this all the parameters influence in designing the doses form in the same way route of administration route of administration is there so oral formulations that we want to prepare or topical or parenteral this all factors influence the designing the doses form okay in the same way drug dose and dose regime is there type of drug product excipients and method of manufacturing this all the parameters influence the drug product design now our first phase that is the absorption of the drug so what is the absorption process so when the drug enter inside the body later on drug is going to permeate through the membrane and enter into the systemic circulation that process is the absorption in simple sense we can say is that the drug absorption is defined as the process of movement of unchanged drug from site of administration means gi tract to systemic 
circulations here plasma cow is there here when the drug enter inside the body enter later on absorb and enter into the systemic circulation slowly the concentration of drug is going to increase 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 when is the concentration of the drug is above the mec that is the minimum effective concentration later on the drug is capable to elicit the pharmacological action if the concentration of the drug is less than mec if the concentration of drug is less than mec in blood then the drug is not capable to elicit the pharmacological action now absorption means the permeation of the drug from gi tract to the systemic circulations so that permeations occur by the variety of process variety of transport mechanism is involved so mechanisms of the drug absorption so passive diffusion is there port transport mechanism is the facilitated diffusion active transport ion pair endocytosis facilitated diffusion and active transport is combinedly called as a carrier mediated transport mechanism okay now important mechanism for the drug absorption is the passive diffusion right passive diffusion is also called as a non ionic diffusion maximum amount of drug absorb through the passive diffusion mechanism 90% of the drug is going to absorb by the passive diffusion driving force for the passive diffusion is the concentration gradient means the drug is going to move from the high concentration to the low concentration the passive diffusion is expressed by the fick's first law of the diffusion now what is the fick's first law fick's first law means the drug molecule is diffused from the region of higher concentrations to the lower concentrations until the equilibrium is achieved so in simple sense we can say is that the rate of diffusion is directly proportional to the concentration gradient of the membrane so dq by dt is the rate of diffusion is directly proportional to the concentration gradient this dak divided by h is the coefficient d means the diffusion coefficient a is the area through which the drug is going to absorb k is the lipophilicity of the drug molecule and h is the thickness of the membrane okay so here the high concentrations is always maintained on gi tract means the concentrations in gi tract is always high due to the sink conditions now what is the sink conditions as the drug is going to absorb and enter into the systemic circulation blood is continuously in the moving condition so blood swept the drug molecule away from that area so always the high concentration is maintained in gi tract this passive diffusion follow the first order kinetics now second one is the carrier mediated transport mechanisms now we observe that many polar drugs cross the membrane more quickly than the predicted here actually this carrier mediated transport mechanism is for the transportation of the nutrient nutrient can be transported with the help of the carrier mediated transport mechanism like the glucose is there here carriers that bind reversibly or non covalently with the solute molecules and later on that complex will permeate through the membrane and that carrier will release the drug molecule on the another side it will dissociate the drug molecule on the another side of the membrane now here this carrier mediated transport mechanism is for the nutrient only specific carriers are available for the specific nutrient so it is the structure specific transport process this transport process is the structure specific so it is mainly denoted for it is mainly available for the transport is a uh, transportation of the nutrient but drug can be transported if the drug structure is similar to the nutrient structure so drug can be called as a false nutrient for example 5 fluorouracil is there 5 fluorouracil that structure is similar like a nutrient so carriers are not capable to distinguish between the drug molecule and nutrient molecule and it will combine with the drug molecule and it will carry the drug molecule to the another side of the membrane carriers are limited so system is the capacity limited means after some specific concentrations the 
transportation process is become a constant so that's why the carrier mediated transportation is called as a mixed order kind it follow the mixed order kinetics it follow the mixed order kinetics the gi area where the concentrations of the carrier is more that area is called as a absorption window for that particular drug carrier mediated transportation is divided into the two types facilitated diffusions and active transport in facilitated diffusions the drug is going to move from the high concentrations to the low concentrations with the help of carriers and in active transport mechanism drug is going to move from low concentration to high concentrations with the help of carriers active transport mechanism is also called as a uphill transport mechanism against the concentration gradient means the drug is going to move from the low concentrations to the high concentrations and for that moment definitely energy is required required the energy for the transportation endogenous substance like the sodium is there potassium is there calcium is there iron glucose amino acids vitamins can be transported with the help of active transport mechanism in the active transport mechanism two type is there primary active transport mechanism and secondary active transport mechanism primary active transport mechanism means the specific molecule is transported from low concentrations to high concentrations with the help of the energy okay they require the ionic transport secondary active transport mechanism means the two molecule is going to transport it from these two molecule one molecule require the energy and second molecule can be transported with the help of the first molecule in that two type is there sympot and antipot sympot means both the molecule is transported on the same direction and antipot means both the molecule is transported in opposite direction for example sympot sodium and glucose molecule is there so sodium is transported from the low concentrations to high concentrations with the help of the energy and glucose is connected with the sodium glucose is transported with the help of sodium glucose not required the uh, glucose not utilize the energy it transported with the help of the sodium so both the molecule is transported inside the cell but only sodium utilize the energy so this type of transportation is called as a sympot second one is the antipot suppose the sodium required the energy and with the help of the energy is transported from outside to inside the cell now the concentrations of the positive ion inside the cell is going to increase so for balancing that positive ion suppose h plus or k plus is expelled outside so here the moment of na plus inside and moment of k plus outside so here energy required by the sodium plus only so here two molecule means two ion is going to transport it sodium and potassium and both is transported in opposite directions and only, only one ion required the energy so this type of transportation is called as a antipod transport mechanism second one is the ion pair transport mechanism means the ionic drug can be transported with the help of the ion pair transport mechanisms actually when the drug enter inside the gi tract the drug is going to link with the oppositely charged endogenous ion that is already available on the membrane like the mucin is there so that complex is formed and that complex is neutral in nature and when it is become neutral it can easily transport it with the help of the passive diffusion so this neutral complex will diffuse more easily and cross the membrane so ionic drug itself directly cannot permeate through the membrane why because that lipophilicity is very 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 less it make the complex and later on is going to transport it second process for the transportation that is the endocytosis endocytosis in that two types is there phagocytosis and pinocytosis if the drug is in the solid form it is transported by the phagocytosis process and if it is in the liquid form then it is transported by the pinocytosis process this phagocytosis and pinocytosis is also called as a vesicular transport so actually here when any drug molecules come nearer to the cell the cell will make the pseudopods it will engulf that drug molecules it is covered into the vesicles that vesicles is transported through the cytoplasm and later on that vesicles will release the drug on the another side of the cell membrane so by this way drug is going to transport it by the phagocytosis process okay 
so different vitamins is the vitamin a d e k is the peptides is the they transported by this endocytosis process okay thank you thank you very much you can visualize this all the series you can see this all the videos on pharma ignite sites please subscribe this pharma ignite sites thank you thank you very much